All right, it won't go away. You might have thought it was gone, but it is back. A couple of weeks away from free agency. NFL Combine starting next week. Business is picking up for the Texans. Just announced the coaching staff. We'll react to that a little bit uh, as the week goes on. But the coaching staff is complete heading into Combine week, which is going to be very, very interesting for the Texans. The quarterbacks are going to speak on Friday. They're going to work out on Saturday along with the wide receivers and tight ends. Saturday is going to be must-watch. TV uh, also have free agency starting after that and a familiar name. It seems like this name has been brought up quite often. And uh, now Jeremy Fowler of ESPN says Texans and Falcons could be, that's the key word, could be landing spots for Jimmy Garoppolo. Let's, let's look at this in a number of ways. It is the locker room. Number one source for Texans daily digital content, subscribe, like share, comment spread you can hear me monday through friday 10 to 2 on sports radio 610 and the odyssey app the official home of the texans uh we're covering this team uh as as well and as close uh as anyone so ride along with us and uh, consume as much texans digital content as possible from the texans perspective why would they bring in jimmy garoppolo um would he be brought in to be a mentor to a young quarterback would they be looking at a quarterback that maybe they wouldn't feel comfortable putting on the field immediately. Um, could they be looking at not drafting a quarterback altogether? Uh, those are all of the possibilities, which if you dive into them, I think you can make a case for all of those scenarios. Also, from a demand standpoint, what is the market going to be like for Jimmy Garoppolo? Uh, assuming that the Jets are as committed to Derek Carr as they appear. And it seems like Aaron Rodgers is the only other name. Um, who else is really going to be dying to bring in Jimmy Garoppolo? Kyle Shanahan has said he's done with him. He said he doesn't see a scenario where Jimmy's back. There's also been like some reports of maybe they don't, they don't get along as much as they once did. Um, the other teams that need quarterbacks, whether it's Carolina, Atlanta, I mean, do they want to bring in Jimmy Garoppolo? Is Jimmy Garoppolo any better than Desmond Ritter or drafting a quarterback or trading for Lamar Jackson from the Atlanta point of view, uh, from the Carolina point of view, uh, Frank Reich. I mean, it seems like it would just be kind of deja vu for him bringing in Jimmy Garoppolo with what he's been through the last damn near half decade, bringing in veteran quarterbacks. So I don't know what the market's going to be for Jimmy Garoppolo. So he might not have that many suitors and the Texans, whether they're looking for a mentor, whether they're looking for a placeholder, whether they're just looking at ignoring a quarterback, um, it could mean a lot of things. Um, from the perspective of the veteran QB market, let's pretend that the Texans want to bring in a veteran QB, uh, it, it, whatever the role is. They want to bring in the best veteran quarterback possible um, and, and maybe the best backup. Like, are we looking at Jimmy Garoppolo as a backup right now? Is Jimmy Garoppolo to the point where he accepts the fact uh, – that he's a backup because you could do a lot worse than Jimmy Garoppolo as a backup quarterback. I would say if, if you bring in Jimmy Garoppolo and he's going to be a backup for your rookie quarterback, you got to look at Jimmy as one of the, one of the better backup quarterbacks in the league. If you're trying to win immediately, he is a system fit. Obviously um, he has won a lot of games. The biggest issue has been health now, it will be interesting, though, if they do bring in Garoppolo, the dialogue is immediately going to shift to, you know, we've been talking about all these quarterbacks. We've been talking about these rookie quarterbacks. We talked about Anthony Richardson. We've talked about Bryce Young. We've talked about C.J. Stroud. We've talked about Will Levis. Ugh. Makes me barf just saying that. Um, and now you're bringing in Jimmy Garoppolo. Is it time to talk about Jalen Carter, Will Anderson, et cetera? That's going to be interesting. You also have the connections uh, with Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, Obviously, Nick Casario has a history with Jimmy Garoppolo. There was a time where many people felt that he was going to be the heir apparent to Tom Brady, ended up trading him to San Francisco. Uh, D'Amico Ryans was in San Francisco with him, as was Bobby Slowick. Uh, what do they think about Jimmy Garoppolo? Um, if Kyle Shanahan and him don't get along, how does Bobby Slowick feel? I know Bobby Slowick uh, worked with him. Um, it's possible, again, Jeremy Fowler said, could be landing spots. It's possible that D'Amico and Bobby Slowick 
don't like Jimmy Garoppolo. What does Nick Casario think? Uh, but the connections are there. I also think that when you're when you're thinking about a decision like this and you're through the mud if you're Nick Casario uh, and you're trying to get to the next step of the process, which is an exciting step, and you're D'Amico Ryans and you got your first head coaching job and you got a six-year contract and you're trying to build something, um, what are the lessons that you've learned? And, and I want to look at this um, from – the three most important, in my opinion, point of views in this organization, um, ownership, GM, and head coach slash coaching staff. Like, what lessons can you learn? Like, a lot of times when you, when you make a mistake and you find yourself, if you're fortunate enough, in a similar situation where you have to make a decision like that, you go back to what you've learned in similar situations from – Ownership's perspective, Cal McNair, I think the one one of the lessons that I think Cal can learn from um, his father, Bob, rest in peace, um, is sometimes you don't want to force your front office to go out and find a quarterback if the market isn't ideal. And I, and I go back to 2016 when... Bob, according to a lot of reports, and 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 to his credit, um, he was trying to get aggressive, and, and and they were able to they were able to get out of it quickly uh, in finding Deshaun Watson. But uh, according to many people, and I think McLean has said this too, uh, he basically told Rick Smith, "We're tired of this crap with you know the quarterback musical chairs. Go find me a quarterback." And they ended up paying Brock Osweiler at the time, probably the top free agent on the market, and it just didn't go well. And fortunately for Rick Smith, he was able to avoid disaster. He was able to trade up for Deshaun Watson, and they had to give up a second-round pick to get out of the Osweiler thing. But it didn't go according to plan, and who knows what would have happened had they stayed the course. If they would have just decided to go with another veteran, they, they probably still would have ended up trying to find a quarterback the next year. But we do have an example of of Bob kind of getting over aggressive and putting pressure on the front office to go find a quarterback and it kind of backfiring because the quarterback market wasn't great. So is Cal McNair going to say, hey, we need to get a quarterback in the draft uh, no matter what? You might not like these guys. They might love these guys, but let's pretend they don't like these guys and Cal says, hey, we got to go get a quarterback. Is he going to do that? I find that hard to believe. Um, and I just don't think Cal functions like that. I think he lets guys do their job uh, for better or worse. Uh, fortunately, I think he's got good guys uh, in control right now instead of King Bill um, and the POS person of service, Jack Easterby. But I, I just don't see Cal McNair really pressuring them to find a quarterback if the scouts, the coach, the Texan scouts and coaches get in a room and they don't like any of these quarterbacks or think that you know, going in a different direction and having a guy like Jimmy Garoppolo hold it down is in their best interest. Um, next point of view, Nick Casario, general manager. Now, Nick Casario is kind of spoiled when it comes to the quarterback position. Um, he had Tom Brady for all those years, and that's really the experience that Nick Casario has. I know they kicked the tires on Davis Mills, um, but Nick Casario hasn't really been in a position in his entire career where – you have the number two pick and you have four quarterbacks that many people feel warrant being selected that high. So for Nick Casario, it's kind of unfamiliar territory because you had Tom Brady all that time. And now this is a different situation. So I don't know what Nick Casario's experience is. I know that Nick Casario is really good at gathering information, weighing stuff out, talking to people. Um, and he's also comes across as kind of a guy who, if he feels that it's not in the best interest to draft a quarterback at two, he's not going to do it. I mean, he's not just going to, he's not just going to say, okay, I'm, I'm talking myself into this guy, which I feel like a lot of us are doing with the quarterbacks. Uh, you know, I have two ones next year. Let's build a perfect team. Let's get an elite player and figure it out. Um, I think Nick Casario, he's kind of a wild card here because we've never seen him in this situation. Uh, but I think he's a guy who's probably not too scared to uh, to do whatever, as he says, and as everybody really says, but we always credit 
Bill Belichick and, and Bill O'Brien for. Uh, he's going to do what's in the best interest of the team. He's not probably not going to spell it like B.O.B. Uh, and, and be as much of a uh, Bill Belichick poser. I think Nick can speak for himself, but he's kind of the wild card when it comes to that point of view. Uh, final point of view is D'Amico Ryans and the coaching staff. They have an interesting experience with quarterbacks, and, and this can go a number of ways. Uh, as we're talking about like a potential decision to bring in D'Amico, uh, to bring in Jimmy Garoppolo or um, maybe not even draft a quarterback. So when D'Amico Ryans went to San Francisco, they brought in Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo started off really well. They trusted Jimmy Garoppolo. He took him to a Super Bowl, and in that Super Bowl, he just wasn't good enough. If he would have been even a little above average, then D'Amico Ryans probably has a Super Bowl ring, uh, and Jimmy Garoppolo does as well. So they learned right there that you're kind of in the, the quarterback middle class uh, where the quarterback's good, but when you need him most, he's not good enough, which is why San Francisco – uh, with Kyle Shanahan and with D'Amico there, and Bobby Slowick, by the way, who came in the same year. He's now the offensive coordinator for the Texans. They decided that they are then going to trade for Trey Lance. Now, did they just love Trey Lance? Because I think this is the really important question when we talk about the Texans having the number two overall pick. Did San Francisco just love Trey Lance so much that from the very beginning, they felt, okay, we're going to trade all these assets. We're going to bring in Trey Lance, and he's going to be that dude. Or did San Francisco feel that, you know what? We've got to do something. We've got to be aggressive. We might not love these quarterbacks, but we like Trey Lance more than the rest of them. So we're going to trade. We're going to bring in Trey Lance because we just have to have a quarterback, which is what you hear a lot. And sometimes... It just doesn't work out. Ask the Jets with Zach Wilson. They're dealing with the same thing. So is it possible that D'Amico Ryans and Bobby Slowick, based on that experience where Trey Lance hasn't worked out, and, and look, I know he still has some time to prove himself, but let's be honest, people weren't excited about Trey Lance last year when they watched him play. Um, and I think the way that the San Francisco 49ers team talked about Brock Purdy, I know it was a lot of praise about, about Brock Purdy, but it almost felt like, they were in a way saying we like this guy better than what Trey Lance was uh, to the point where even like at Super Bowl media day, there were, there were certain 49ers that were like, who do you, who do you think should be the quarterback? And they were saying Brock. So does D'Amico Ryans look at that and say, look, I've been in a position where we were close and we were close to, to winning a Super Bowl. We were a couple of plays away from winning a Super Bowl. We got aggressive. We went up. We traded, we drafted who we thought was the best quarterback at the time. And quite frankly, we didn't get a damn thing from him. And our team was built so well that we were still able to compete. And we made a run with Jimmy Garoppolo as a fallback plan. And then with Brock Purdy, who was the final pick in the draft. So does D'Amico Ryans look at it that way? It's going to be interesting. Uh, Jim, the Jimmy Garoppolo name will not go away. Uh, what it would mean, it could mean a lot of things. Uh, and that's very intriguing. And the connections, uh, they cannot be avoided because you have the Casario connection, the D'Amico connection, uh, and you have a bunch of experiences that could shape this up. So business picking up, offseason coming, combine coming next week. Uh, next Friday, a week from today, we're going to hear from all the quarterbacks, all the starting quarterbacks. They're going to talk in the morning. Uh, we'll react to that. Then Saturday, uh, get that popcorn um, because you're going to get to watch the quarterbacks, the tight ends, the wide receivers, all of which I would assume are positions that the Texas, uh, the Texans uh, will pick from uh, once the draft comes around. Jimmy G, what do you think? Should the Texans bring in Jimmy Garoppolo? If so, if so, what should his role be? Should he be a mentor? Should he be a hold down the fort guy? Should they draft a quarterback even if they bring in Jimmy Garoppolo? Should they avoid Jimmy Garoppolo altogether? Would you rather roll with Davis Mills as the backup? Would you rather roll with Davis Mills uh, as the placeholder? Uh, subscribe, comment, uh, and let's keep the dialogue going. At Landry Locker on Twitter, in the loop, show of record, 10 to 2, Monday through Friday.
10 to 2 Central on Sports Radio 610. Download the Odyssey app. Off season's picking up. Fun times ahead. Jimmy Garoppolo won't go away. Uh, what say you? What do you make of it? I think I would personally say no to it, but I don't know what they think. There's a lot of intrigue here. There's a lot of possibilities. No matter what happens, whether Jimmy G is here, whether he's elsewhere, uh, whether the Texans draft a quarterback, whatever, comes to this Texan stuff. We are all in this together. Have a good weekend.